In this video, we're going to talk about logarithms in the context of functions. So this would be something like in a pre-calculus or a college algebra class. So, and also we're going, to, we're going to discuss the restrictions that we briefly mentioned in a separate video. So logarithms have restrictions on them, and we'll cover those in this video here. So f of x equals the base b log of x. So if we think of logarithms in the context of functions, then we have something like this. And the restriction then is b, the base b has to be positive. Yikes. OK. The base b has to be positive, And b cannot be equal to 1. So if we deal with logarithms, whether we're dealing with them as functions or just logarithms just by themselves, not in, even in the context of functions, the base of the logarithm has to be positive, And the base cannot be equal to 1. OK. Now we also, so that covers the restrictions on the base b. What about restrictions on x? So remember, in the context of functions, that's domain. So the domain of a function is the set of all the possible input values. In other words, the possible values of x. So the domain is actually all the positive real numbers. So in interval notation, uh, covered in a separate video, interval notation would be this, 0 to infinity, which is just a fancy way of saying x has to be strictly greater than 0. Okay, strictly greater, not greater than or equal to. So x is not allowed to be 0. X is not allowed to be negative. X can be any positive real number. And that's OK to put in here. So the domain is all positive real numbers. How about the range? Remember that uh, the range of a function is the set of all the possible output values. So the range is actually all real numbers. So all real numbers. OK, so here. Just to recap real quick, b greater than 0, b not equal to 1, that gives us restrictions on the base, what the base can be. The domain gives us restrictions on what x can be. And the range gives us restrictions on what the left-hand side, f of x, can actually be. Okay, So that covers the restrictions on all three of these things here. And this is just a quick or a brief overview of logarithms in the context of functions. But again, I do want to point out that these restrictions don't just apply to the context of functions. These restrictions apply to logarithms in general, no matter what context you're talking about. We always have these restrictions on the base, on the input, and on the output. OK, so that's that. And in a separate video, we're going to see how to actually evaluate logarithms.